Welcome to Hurry Up Pinball, a show where I teach you how to work on your pinball machine. Today I will walk you through how to install the Pinwolfer GT SAM Super Kit. So grab your tools and let's get going. Here you can see the items that come in the Super Kit. The kit includes the Pinwolfer GT Amp, one set of 3D printed mounting rings with hardware, a 3D printed amp mounting housing bracket with hardware, a cabinet speaker with mounting ring, anti-rattle tape and mounting hardware, a wiring harness, expander board, power board, speaker connectors and zip ties, along with two back box speakers. For detailed installation instructions, head over to pinwolfer.com, create an account, select downloads, and pick your system from the available options. To begin this installation, Move the pinball machine to a location where you have access to both sides of the pinball cabinet and back box. Before beginning any work, make sure to unplug the pinball machine. With the pinball machine unplugged, open the coin door, remove the lockdown bar, close the coin door, and remove the playfield glass. If you have cabinet protectors, install them at this time and then partially raise the playfield. With the playfield partially raised, use the coil plunger to remove the pinballs from the machine. Now grab the back box keys and remove the trans light to gain access to the back box. Place a towel across the width of the pinball machine and then lift the speaker panel out of the back box and gently rest it on the towel. Make sure it does not slide after you lay it down. Next. Grab the Pinwolfer wiring harness and starting with the red and white RCA cable end, feed the wiring harness into the bottom right hole in the back box. Feed the cable until there is about 2 to 3 feet of loose cable available for routing in the back box. Now raise the speaker panel back into position and remove the towel. Reach into the back right corner of the pinball cabinet and feed the Pinwolfer wiring harness down the right side of the cabinet towards the coin door. Use the existing wire loom to secure the wiring harness to the back wall as seen here. Now place the towel on the back box and completely raise the playfield. Grab the wiring harness that you fed down the right side of the cabinet and feed it out the coin door. Make sure the cabinet speaker connectors from the wiring harness are roughly even with the cabinet speaker as shown here. If you purchase the 3D printed amp mounting bracket, install it as seen here. You can use the included hardware, or if you prefer not to drill into the cabinet, use very high bond double sided sticky tape. Pinwolfer recommends removing the amp before transporting the pinball machine if you do not attach the amp bracket with screws. Pinwolfer also cautions against mounting the amp to the side of the pinball cabinet. With the mounting bracket installed, place the Pinwolfer amp in the bracket as seen here. Now lower the playfield and rest it on the end of the support brackets, then place a towel across the width of the pinball cabinet. With the towel in place, lower the speaker panel again for maximum access to the back box. Now it is time to install the power board on connector J10. Remove the connector from the board and plug it into the Pinwolfer power board. The connector is keyed so be sure to line up the pins. Once the stern connector is connected to the Pinwolfer power board, plug the power board into J10 as seen here. Here is how it should look with the power board installed. Now grab the two pin power cable connector from the Pinwolfer wiring harness and connect it to the power board you just installed. Be sure to hold the board firmly as you connect the power cable so as not to stress the pins on J10. Here is what it should look like with the two pin power connector installed. Now it is time to install the expander board. For this step, we will be removing the cables here labeled audio. Remove the connector from J10 on the audio board and then install the expander board as shown here. The 3.5mm jack should face the right side of the back box. Here is how it should look when properly installed. 
I would recommend taking a zip tie from the Pinwolfer kit and securing the connector you removed from J10. This connector is no longer needed. Don't forget to cut off the excess zip tie. Next, grab the 3.5mm connector from the Pinwolfer wiring harness and feed it up the right side of the back box, and then plug it into the expander board. Be sure to hold the expander board while plugging in the 3.5mm cable so as not to stress the pins. Here is how it should look with the 3.5mm cable installed. Now is a good time to tidy up the wires in the back box. Grab a few zip ties and secure the power cable and the audio cable. Make sure to leave some slack in the cable so they do not pull on the boards when lowering the head of the pinball machine. Don't forget to trim off the excess zip tie material. Here is how it should look with the zip ties in place. Now it is time to install the new back box speakers. If you haven't already done so, lower the speaker panel at this time. Since we will be replacing the back box speakers, undo the Molex connector as seen here. This will allow you to remove the old speakers without clipping any wires. Next, take your magnetic nut driver and remove the four lock nuts holding on the speakers. Be sure to leave the speaker grill and ground cable in place. Now move over to the other side of the pinball cabinet and remove the other stock speaker, again leaving the speaker grill in place. Here is a look at the stock speakers sitting next to the upgraded speakers we will be installing. Now it is time to install the 3D printed speaker adapter. Install the speaker ring on the existing posts, and using the included hardware, install one washer and one lock nut. Use your nut driver to evenly tighten down the speaker ring. Here is how it should look once installed. Next, grab the new back box speaker and carefully install it on the 3D printed speaker ring. The speaker will be held on by the two posts on the speaker ring. Add one washer and one lock nut to each post and then use your nut driver to tighten down the lock nuts. Head over to the right side of the cabinet and repeat this process. Make sure the ground cable is connected to the bottom right post of the speaker panel before mounting the 3D printed speaker ring. Don't forget to install a washer along with the lock nuts on each post. With the new speakers installed, it is time to connect the wiring harness to the speakers. Grab the wiring harness cable labeled right and connect the blue wire to the positive terminal and the black wire to the negative terminal. You can separate the two connectors as needed to create some slack. Now repeat this process for the other speaker. Here is how it should look when properly connected. With the back box speakers installed and connected, raise the speaker panel back into position and double check that no cables are being pinched. Now remove the towel, place it on the back box, and completely raise the playfield. Grab a pair of wire cutters and clip the two wires leading to the cabinet speaker. These wires will no longer be needed. After clipping the wires, remove the four lock nuts holding on the cabinet speaker and then remove the stock speaker. Pinwoofer also recommends removing the stock grill to avoid it rattling with the upgraded speaker. Since a small corner of the speaker grill is mounted under the ground braid, use a pair of scissors to cut a line from the outside edge of the grill to the threaded post. Be very careful not to cut the ground braid. With a small line cut in the grill, the grill should slide right out. Here is a look at the stock speaker sitting next to the upgraded cabinet speaker. In order to mount the new cabinet speaker, you will need to install the new speaker mounting ring. Using the included hardware, install one washer and one lock nut on each post and use the nut driver to tighten it down. With the speaker ring mounted, gently install the new speaker with the positive and negative terminals facing the back right side of the pinball cabinet. Take your time and line up the threaded posts with the holes in the new speaker and then add one washer and one lock nut to each post. Use your nut driver to evenly tighten down the lock nuts. Here is how it should look when properly installed. Next, 
Take the speaker connectors from the Pinwolfer wiring harness and connect the red wire to the positive terminal and the black wire to the negative terminal. Here is how it should look with the speaker wires connected. Now grab the end of the wiring harness that you fed out the coin door previously and connect the Molex connector to the Molex connector from the amp. Then connect the power cable and red and white RCA cables to the Pinwolfer amp. If you need to, remove the amp from the mounting bracket. Position the excess wiring harness cable so that it doesn't get hung up on anything inside the cabinet. Here is how it should look with the RCA cables and the power cable properly connected to the amp. At this time, plug the pinball machine back in. Now partially lower the playfield, remove the towel from the back box, reinstall the trans light, completely lower the playfield, remove the cabinet protectors if you use them, reinstall the pinballs and playfield glass, and install the lockdown bar. Now remove the amp from the mounting bracket and place it on the playfield glass. Before turning on the pinball machine, be sure to pull out the white pin on the inside of the coin door so the machine boots normally and high voltage is running to the playfield. Go ahead and turn on the pinball machine at this time. Now it is time to dial in the amp. Dialing in the amp settings is just as important as the installation process. Do not skip this step as it is crucial for understanding how the amp works along with the auto mute feature. For more information on how to dial in the amp, be sure to check out my video tutorial on dialing in the Pinwolfer GT amp. After understanding how the amp works, spend some time trying different settings until you find one that you like, and be sure to upload your settings to the Pinwolfer blog for others to see. I like to start dialing in the amp with all the knobs in the 12 o'clock position, except the gain knob, which I place between 2 and 3 o'clock. I also set the gain volume on the coin door to around 20 to 25. Once you find a setting that you like, push the white pin on the coin door in and place the amp back in the mounting bracket and then close the coin door. If you previously moved the pinball machine, go ahead and push it back into position at this time. The Pinwolfer kit also includes anti-rattle tape for the playfield glass. To install the tape, open the coin door, remove the lockdown bar, and remove the playfield glass. I like to rest a towel against the pinball machine and then lean the sheet of glass against the towel. Before installing the tape, use your preferred glass cleaner on the playfield glass. With the glass now clean, take a strip of anti-rattle tape and cut it to the correct length using a pair of scissors. Remove the paper backing and apply the tape to the glass even with the edge of the glass. I installed my tape on the bottom side of the playfield glass. After installing one strip of tape, test fit the glass. If the glass doesn't want to slide in the channel, do not add a strip on the other side. If you add another strip, it may be possible to seize the glass in the channel. My playfield glass slid freely in the channel, so I added a second piece of tape to the other side. Once you are done installing the anti-rattle tape, reinstall the playfield glass and lockdown bar, and then close the coin door. This is Craig with Hurry Up Pinball, and I wanted to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, show your support for Hurry Up Pinball and click the subscribe button. We can also be found on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram under Hurry Up Pinball.